Hey there, my name is Angela. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm gonna show you how to get some decent self-portraits with your Canon M50. Let's go. To start, there are three things that you're gonna need in order to take photos of yourself. One is a camera, two is a tripod, and three is a smartphone, any kind of phone that you can download apps with. Because if you are a Canon M50 user or a Canon user in general that wants to take self-portraits, you're gonna wanna download the Canon Connect app. So the Canon Connect app allows you to remotely control your camera. You can adjust the ISO, the shutter speed, the aperture all from your phone. And what makes it super clutch is that you can actually see on your phone what your camera sees. And that really helps with setup. So let's move on to location and setup now. Currently, I am in Santa Cruz at Shark Fin Cove. I actually made my first solo overnight trip, which is super exciting, but aside the point, the point is I'm at a beach. Personally, I like taking self-portraits in outdoorsy environments like a beach, a mountainscape, or somewhere outside. But honestly, you can take self-portraits of yourself anywhere and you can find beautiful spots at whatever location you decide to choose. Um, one tip I would like to give you when it comes to choosing which spot to take your photo is make sure it's not super busy. And by super busy, I mean a lot of things going on in the background. Personally, I like to choose an area that has probably like three or four different colors that I can just pop in myself and everything around me doesn't distract from me. If that makes sense, you'll see. For my first location, I'm gonna shoot at this railroad track. So, like I said, I like to choose simple areas with about three colors. For this photo, the sky is gonna be one color, the grass on the side is another one, and then the ground itself is a third one. And it's super clean and simple, so I feel like it wouldn't take away from me as a subject in the photo. And also, bonus the railroad track kind of acts as a line that will guide the viewer's eye to the subject aka me so this is kind of my approach to looking for spots i look for something simple and clean that won't be too distracting and that will allow the viewer's eye to naturally look at the photo how i want them to look at it <laughs> After I've chosen a spot, I set up my camera on its tripod and because all of my self-portraits are being taken for Instagram, I shoot with a vertical position or a portrait position like this. Once I have my camera set up on the tripod, I use the Canon Connect app to position myself in frame and once I find a pose that I like, I set the self timer to 10 seconds or 2 seconds depending on the pose and then I take the shot. And I do this over and over and over again until I get something that I like. When it comes to posing, there are a few things that I always keep in mind. The first being to keep my arms separated from my body. When there is that space between your arms and the side of your body, it makes your arms look leaner. Whereas if they're smushed to the side, it kind of makes them look bigger than they really are. Another thing that I keep in mind when it comes to coming up with pose ideas is making shapes with my limbs, whether that be my arms like I'm doing here or my legs. It's really useful to have this in mind when you're just trying to figure out what the heck to do. Hopefully my intense sock tan doesn't distract you from my last piece of information when it comes to posing, which is to always point your toes. Whenever you point your toes, it makes your leg just look longer. It makes you look taller. And that's something that I always do in my photos. Speaking of photos, here are the photos that I got at this spot. For my next photo, I want to get the Sharkman of Sharkman Cove in the background, so I chose this spot right here. Another reason why I chose it is there is this nice bush here, and that sounds weird when I say it out loud, but the reason why this bush is nice 
is it is going to play a role as my foreground. So this is a hack that I really like to use for landscape photos, and that is placing something in the foreground that's blurry to really get the viewer to look at what they're supposed to look at. In this case, I'm gonna be the subject of the photo, so the blurry foreground will make the viewer look at what's in focus, which will be me, and it adds some depth to a photo, and I think it will really be a nice touch. So let's see what kind of shots I get here. This is my last photo spot right here, which is pretty close to the previous one, but I like this area because of that clearing that's framed by foliage. I think it would look really good if I sat in that clearing or laid down in that clearing, which brings me to my next tip, which is to get different types of photos. And by that, I mean get some of you standing, some of you sitting, some of you laying down, some close up, some far away. Getting different shots like that gives you the option to have a more diverse selection once it comes down to editing them. So with that tip in mind, let's see what kind of shots I got here. To wrap things up, I'd like to leave you with two words of advice. One is take as many shots as it takes to get one that you like. It can take thousands of shots, especially when you're first starting out. Self-portraits can be kind of awkward and you need to find out what works for you. And the only way you can do that is by taking as many photos as you possibly can. And my second word of advice and my final word of advice is to have fun with it because there's absolutely no point in doing something if you're miserable the entire time. Have fun with it, it's supposed to be fun. It's just your Instagram or it's just a self-portrait. It's not freaking life-changing, it's not world-changing. Have fun with it. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, bye.